This is the fourth part of an introduction to APL. In this video, we'll see how to create user functions and see some new primitives. In the term user function, the user here means written by the user. For example, let's say that we want to compute the amount owed given the tax in percent. We need to supply two things, the amount and the tax in percent. APL does not have a primitive to calculate the tax, and the tax changes from one place to another. So we can create our own function. Let's see, we'll call it uh, tax of. So to create a function, we can use the system command right paren ed, ed for editor. And we say that we want to create a function tax of, T-A-X, capital O, V. And APL brings up a new window. It already has typed the name for us. What we need to do is now fill in the rest. So what we're going to say is tax of takes a left argument and a right argument and returns a result. In this case here, the result will be called amount. The left argument will be called price and the right argument will be called tax. And the way we compute the amount is we say it's the price times 1 plus the tax divided by 100. We know that the tax is in percent, so if we say 18, we have to calculate 18 percent. So 18 divided by 100 is 18 percent. We add 1 to that to make sure that we include the price. And we multiply by the price, and this will give us the final amount. When we're finished writing the function, we hit escape, and APL creates the function for us. We can now use it just like any other primitive, and if we type 100 tax of 15, APL will compute the tax properly for us, and the total amount will be 115. And in this case, it works just like any other scalar APL primitive function, meaning that it works on one by one. So for example, if we want to know the tax of 100 at 15%, of 300 at 12%, and 1000 at 8.5%, all we have to do is put in the prices on the left, the taxes on the right, and APL will compute all the numbers for us. We've written a function that does something that APL could not do. This is not a primitive function, it is a user function. Now here's a new primitive function called combinations. To give you an idea, how many ways do you combine n items taken out of a group of m things? Think of uh, how many ways you can combine two balls taken out of a group of four. Imagine they're all different colors. Well, you can have a yellow and a blue, a yellow and a green, a yellow and a red, a blue and a green, a blue and a red, and finally a green and a red. So there's six ways you can pick two balls out of four different ones. So there's a function for that in EPL. It's called combination or bang, and it returns you the number. So bang is the function to use. It, since it's a scalar function, you can put in many numbers on one side and or the other and get the proper answer. Residue is another function that uh, returns what will be left after you distribute m things among n people. For example, what will be left after you distribute equally 11 candies among 4 children? Well, each child will get 2 candies and 3 candies will be left undistributed. So the way to do that, you say 4 modulo 11 and modulo is on the M key, so you do control M key and you get the modulo function. Since it is a scalar function, you can put one or many numbers on either side of the function. Relational functions. These functions answer questions like um, is A greater than B? There are six relational functions equal, different, smaller than, greater than, smaller or equal, greater or equal. They are all scalar functions. So for example, if I say 353 three is smaller than 533, three, well, only 3 is smaller than 5. All the other ones are not true. And it returns 1 if it's true, 0 if it's false. Here's another example. We want to find out if using outer product, if 1 is smaller than 1, 2, 3, 4, if 2 is smaller than 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 is smaller than 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 is smaller than 1, 2, 3, 4. So we use our product. We say n jot dot smaller than n, and we get a table of zeros and ones, where 0 denotes where it's false, and 1 where it's true. All of these six relational functions are located at these positions there, which is above the 3 and up till above the 8. You have to use control to get at them. 
Logical functions. These functions answer questions like, are both A and B true? There are two main logical functions. They return 1 if it is true, or 0 if it is false. Just like the relational functions. They are all scalar functions. For example, assuming that n has that value, we can assign to a if n is greater than 0, and we can assign to b if n is smaller than 20. Then when we say a and b, that tells us effectively where all the numbers that are greater than 0 and smaller than 20. In this case, all the ones associated with 2, 7, and 12, which is exactly the ones that are greater than 0 and smaller than 20. Here's another one. We want to know the numbers that are smaller than 0 or greater than 10. Again, APL gives us the answer. These logical functions are located above 9 and 0. So control 9 is OR and control 0 is AND. So you can write your own functions that are using APL primitives. We can use bang or exclamation mark to find combinations. We can use modulo or control M to find a residue between two numbers. We, think we now know that there are six relational primitives and two main logical primitives called AND and OR.